patience is not waning. Your patience has, has, has disappeared. You don't have any more patience anymore. In those situations, it seems like we can get very close to the Lord. Easy to throw ourselves on our, on our knees before the Lord. Fall on our face before the Lord because our situation is just so dire. And if you were here this couple of weeks ago when I spoke, I said that that is one part of our spiritual upbringing. But the other part is when things are going well, then do you also fall on your face before the Lord? When he's answered your prayer, when he's given you the things that you've required, things that you've asked for, when he's given you the healing that you that you asked for, are you still on your face? Do you still seek him as fervently as you did before when the circumstances were much different? I just want to suggest that if your answer is yes, that you stay on that track. If your answer is no, then make that correction. Just recalibrate a little bit so that you are as fervent in seeking the Lord in good times as you are in bad times. And if there are circumstances or situations where you don't really know what it is you can say to the Lord, then you just do this. Say the name of Jesus. Just say the name. Say the name of Jesus, say the name, so precious as no other name I know. Say the name, say the name, you just say the name of Jesus, you just got to say the name. Say the name, so precious, there's no other name I know that can calm your fears and dry your tears and wipe away your pain. Hallelujah. When you don't know what else can't find the words to say, say the name, sing again from the beginning, say the name of Jesus, say the name, you just got to say the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. say the name, hallelujah, of Jesus, hallelujah. say the name, so precious, there's no other name I know. Say the name, say. Say the name of Jesus. Just say the name of Jesus. Say the name. So what Psalm 42 says, as the deer panteth for the water of my soul longeth after thee, you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. Say that again, as the deer. As the deer panteth for the waters of my soul longeth after 
Take your seats for the next few moments. Good morning, church. I've been blessed to bring you a beautiful communion meditation this morning. It's so good to see everybody's beautiful, happy, smiley faces here. Praise Jesus. So, what is communion? And why do we do it? Hmm. What I'm going to give you is seven important things that are happening while we're taking communion. And hopefully it will open your eyes to a new experience and allow God to work inside of you and transform you in new ways. So one of the first significant things that's happening during communion is this is an act of thanksgiving. Communion is an opportunity to give thanks to God. In fact, it's a reminder to give God thanks. Amen. Thanksgiving is an opportunity for us to celebrate God's faithfulness and grace through the life of Jesus. That this bread and this juice that we consume are not just bread and juice. They're gifts of God's grace, meant to fulfill, sustain, and nourish us spiritually. It's a reminder of God will give everything for us. Communion is this beautiful reminder of how much God loves us. And it's a call to give thanks for that. Another significant reason we celebrate communion is fellowship. Communion is an opportunity for Christians to come together. It binds us together in our common faith. But it goes beyond this. The Bible calls the church a body. Amen. We're all part of the body. We as Christians are the hands and the feet and all the other parts, the pico and the ears and everything of Jesus. And Jesus is the head of that body. We're united in doing his work. We're united in love for him. Amen. We're united in our common salvation. And this meal is an opportunity to experience that unity. This touches another important part of communion, and that is confession. Confession is when we share, when we share communion, we repent of all the ways that we've wronged one another. We share, when we share communion, we set aside time to let go of those grudges, to extend grace, and to experience that unity that God originally intended for us. Another significant part of communion that is, and it is called 
eschatology. Yes, that's a big word. It suggests that when we share communion, we're not just joining together with the people here on earth. It reminds us that the communion meal that we share now is just a foretaste of this great heavenly banquet waiting for us later. And yet, while communion is an opportunity to look forward to what awaits us, it's also an opportunity to remember what has happened before. Communion's an opportunity for us to remember that the last supper that Jesus had with his disciples, the moment that he told them and us to continue to do this in remembrance of him. It's an opportunity to remember how he went to the cross and died for us and that the bread that we eat is his broken body. The cup we share is his blood poured out for us. And it's also time for us to remember his resurrection. That this meal is a promise that death is not the end. Because Jesus conquered the grave and he rose again. Amen. And yet while communion is a time to remember, it's more than just a memorial service. Because as Christians... What we believe is that Jesus is here and he's present during this meal. He's really here. It's not just a memory. He's here. And that leads to another significant part of communion, which is that we don't just remember Jesus' sacrifice. We experience it. When we share communion, we experience it. We believe that this is more than just bread and juice. We're sharing in his body and his blood. It's a way for us to experience God's grace and power in a tangible way. When we come together and celebrate communion, we're celebrating the fact that God's grace is just as real, just as present, just as powerful today as the moment Christ died. Jesus commanded us to share in communion because he knew that this was a unique and powerful way to experience God's grace. But we also have to remember that communion, it's not just about us. Communion isn't about, is an opportunity for God to serve us. It's an opportunity for us to make ourselves a holy and living sacrifice to God. In other words, we're giving ourselves to God at this moment. We're surrendering our lives to Jesus, to be Jesus' disciples and to let him be our savior. And our Lord, right in that word, Lord means that we serve him in everything we do. Our lives are devoted to him and communion is, is a moment that we come and recommit all of that. And here's the thing that makes all that possible. It's the final, most important part of communion. That's the action of the Holy Spirit when we come together and share communion. God's Holy Spirit isn't just present. God's Spirit is active. God's Holy Spirit is transforming these elements from bread and juice into something more. God's Holy Spirit is transforming us in that moment and it's the same holy spirit that god promises will be with us when we leave this communion table and go out and serve in the world it's the same holy spirit that jesus is talking about when he says we'll do even greater things than he did because of the spirit that he is sending to us so as you can see communion is way more than just elements and a ritual this is a part of our faith that Jesus commanded us to practice. Amen. So let's get our uh, sacraments ready here. <coughs> Got a little something a little different today. I'm going to be reading the scripture to you from the Good and Special book. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, he tell God, Mahalo plenty. And he broke the bread up. Then he tell, eat this piece of bread. This is my body. That's going to be for you guys. No, forget me. Let's eat together.
Same thing. After they eat, he take the wine cup and he tell, this cup means that God will make one new kind deal for you guys. And I got to bleed and mock it for make them happen like that. Whenever you guys drink them, that's going to be for you guys. No forget me. Let's drink together. Every time you guys eat this bread and drink out of this cup, till I come back, that's just like you guys, they tell the Jesus story over and over again about how I went mocky, me, the one in charge of you guys. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for taking our place. We thank you, Lord, for the chastisement, the beatings, and of course the crucifixion that you took for us in order to save us from our sin, but also to give us salvation. Father, we love you and we thank you so much. And as we take communion today, let our hearts reflect on just how much you mean to us, Father God. Let our hearts reflect on just who we are. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Kim. Anybody familiar with Psalm 23? You familiar with Psalm 23? I am. What about Proverbs 23? Okay. Proverbs 23. Anybody know Proverbs 23? Verse 7. Okay, I'll say a little bit and you see if you can finish it. As a man or as a woman thinketh in their heart, so, so is he. So is he. As a man or a woman thinketh in their heart, so is he. The Lord is saying to us, most everything that I'm going to do in you is going to start right here. So you got to, if you're in tune to what I'm doing here, then that's what you, that's what will happen. You will manifest that as a man, woman thinketh in their heart. So is he. Let's sing one more song. Hey. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Oh, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high. See you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power in love as we sing, holy, 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 holy. Open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, oh, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, see you high, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Everybody now sing holy. Holy, holy, holy. Our God is holy. Holy, holy, holy. He's so holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Sing holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, holy, 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 I want to see you. 
Sing it one more time. Holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. 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 Say that two more times. I want to see you. I want to see you. Here's the last one. I want to see you. You want to see him? I want to see you. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please take the next few minutes to greet somebody with the love of the Lord? Don't forget to say hi to the folks that are on the lanai. And don't forget to say hi to the folks that have tuned in on the virtual audience when Chris brings the iPad around. Open it up.